This is the new 2023 Suron Ultra B. And by now, many of you already own this bike. So we figured it's a good time to run through the menu features, explain what they do, and help show you the best way to set up your Suron Ultra B. For more options and a written version of these settings, check the description in this video. First, we'll run through the basic display setup, then we'll dive into the feature settings and show you how they perform while riding. Now let's dive into the system feature settings mode and set up our ride modes. Make sure the key is on, the motorcycle is fully stopped, and the kickstand is fully extended. Press the ASR button on the left side handlebar while simultaneously pressing the ready button on the right side handlebar for two seconds. This will allow the display to enter the system feature mode. Momentarily pressing the ASR button will toggle between each main category feature, which is brake regeneration, coast regeneration, traction control, brake sensors, tilt sensors, throttle sensitivity, and charging settings. Momentarily pressing the ready button will toggle between the levels within each feature. Brake energy regeneration. This is setting B in your menu. When the bike is moving, the throttle is off, and the brakes are applied, the electric motor is switched to a generator and begins to return energy to the battery. Physically, the rider will notice an additional level of braking at the rear wheel when activated versus this feature being disabled. It should be noted that this feature does not work until the battery has been discharged below 95%. There are six levels labeled between zero and five. The factory default is B2. Disabled is B0. B1 is the lowest amount of brake regen with the regen level increasing up to B5, which is the highest setting. So we're gonna test all of these features on a steep hill climb to feel what the bike is doing going up and down. All right, so you can see here that we are in the B0 setting, which is basically the freewheel setting for the brake energy regenerative system. So this is gonna feel most natural going downhill. It's just going to be your brakes. Free wheel feel. But yeah, feels natural. It just feels like you're riding the brakes, just like any other bike. All right, so let's try the factory setting now. We're going to bump this up to B2 and see what that feels like. I can definitely feel it locking up the rear. It's not extreme. Just a little bit. Gives you a little bit extra braking in the rear. I guess the downside to this is, I mean, you do feel it kind of immediately lock up. So if you're somebody that likes to drag the rear down hills and stuff, then You'll like that. If you're somebody that finesses it, even just putting it on B2 might be a bit stronger than you'll like. All right, now let's try it with the strongest setting. So we'll bump this up to B5 and see how strong that feels. Interesting. I almost feel like B5 doesn't lock the rear up as much as I was locking it up in B2. I wish I could explain why that is. It's not what I would have predicted, but I mean, it definitely feels strong locking it up there, but for some reason it felt like B2 was locking it up quicker for me. So don't get me wrong, B5 is also locking it up in the rear right now, but I was expecting it to be stronger than that. Coast Energy Regeneration. 
This is setting E in your menu. This is what can be closest referred to as engine braking. When the bike is moving, the throttle is reduced, and the brakes are not applied, the motor is switched to a generator, and it begins to return energy to the battery. Physically, the rider will notice an additional level of slowing or engine braking of the motorcycle when activated versus this feature being disabled. There are six levels between zero and five. The factory default is E3, disabled is E0, E1 is the lowest amount of regen, with the levels increasing up to the highest or strongest setting at E5. When slowing down, the bike will alternate between brake regen and coast regen based on the throttle position and brake levers being used. Pressing either brake lever enables brake regen. Releasing both brake levers enables coast regen, as long as the throttle position is less than what's needed to maintain the current speed. All right, to test this, we're going into E. So we've got E zero through five. Let's try E zero, just to see what it's like to have no engine braking and no regen. So this is going to feel most like a mountain bike or a dead engine bike. And I can already feel it picks up speed super quick going downhill. So depends on what you're riding, right? If you're doing hill climbs and descents, you probably wouldn't want to run it in this E0 because the bike is really going to want to coast on you. But on the flip side, I could see really wanting to run that if you're on a flat motocross track or something where you really want to keep your momentum in corners and you don't want the bike slowing you down at all. But yeah, that is a lot of braking to be done when you're on E0 going downhill. All right, let's try the factory setting. So we're going to bump it up to E3 now. So that's kind of the mid-range regen setting and this is the factory setting so let's try it so you can definitely feel that regen stronger than zero as you would expect it's not super strong but definitely some delay there Probably a good middle of the road setting for everything. I think if you're riding what I'm riding right now, which is, you know, steeper mountain type riding, probably gonna wanna run something stronger than three, but I think for an all around setting, it's probably the best mix of freewheel and engine braking that you can get. We're gonna go to E. E5, so this will be the strongest regen setting, or maybe I should just call it engine braking. So to me, although this is the strongest, I mean, this feels like a two-stroke to me. Potentially even less, depending on what gear you're in, in your two-stroke, so. I think you would expect E5 to feel like four-stroke regen. Four-stroke engine braking, I should say. But uh, no, it feels like a two-stroke. That's normally what I'm riding up here anyway. So yeah, I kind of like that. I've personally been running it in E4. I think that's a, a good setting for me. And after doing that experiment, yeah, that's where I'm gonna keep it, E4. Traction control or ASR. This is setting A in your menu. During acceleration, the motorcycle compares the RPM of the front wheel to the rear wheel. If the rear wheel RPM is greater than the front wheel of the motorcycle, it will reduce the power to the rear wheel to minimize the difference. The purpose of this setting is to maximize traction in loose soil conditions. There are three levels labeled between one and three. The factory default is A2. 
The lowest setting is A1, and the highest is A3. The setting you select here determines the initial setting the motorcycle enters when ASR is enabled from the left handlebar combination switch. ASR is enabled and disabled by pressing the ASR switch on the left handlebar switch three times, or a single long press, and riders can toggle the intensity level by quickly double pressing the reverse switch. All right, so this is hill climb number one. We're gonna do no traction control on this. I'm gonna try to get you guys some shots so you can see what this hill climb is like because it's definitely a lot steeper than the GoPro shows you, but let's try this. Traction control off, stock tires that have seen a bit of riding thus far. Let's see how we do. Lean back. Pulling pretty good. I mean, it feels like any other dirt bike without traction control. Actually hooked up pretty good. Not a whole lot of slipping there. All right, so we're back at the bottom now. Let's uh, pick a more difficult line. I feel like I got up that too easy, so. I know that there's a loose section that we can hit. And let's do it. Honestly, it's still getting really good traction, especially considering this rear tire is probably not the best for hooking up, but yeah, I've actually climbed it pretty darn good. All right, so let's try traction control one. So I'm going to switch it over to A1. Throw the kickstand up and then I punch this three times. One, two, three. You can see ASR and it's got the one bar. So yeah, let's see how ASR one feels in that loose stuff. So that could just have been rider error, but that's, this is me oh, picking a bad line potentially, but I broke the rear loose uh, way worse with the traction control on. Um, why is that? Maybe it's just a predictability type of thing for me potentially. At least when the traction control's off, you know what to expect, but I could have also just picked a bad line there, so. All right, let's do another run with ASR1. I just want to see if that was me making a poor line selection or if that was more the traction control that was scooping me up there. I hit this with a little more momentum this time. All right, that was better line choice. Man. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh. All right. I'll give you my boss at the end. I was about to say something, but I'll save it. I'm gonna make you wait for it. Let's bump it up for traction control. So let's do, go over to A. I'm actually just gonna go full, full on. We're gonna go A3 and see what the strongest setting feels like for traction control. So that's immediately cutting power on me. I can feel it. 
I was just kind of holding it wide open. That's just shopping power doing its job, I suppose. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm struggling now to just get momentum. I want to be going faster than this. Ooh. So that's the bike just not wanting to go. I've got the throttle wide open right now. And, ooh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it, there's just no traction here. So, so you can see this is steep and this is loose. Um, and yeah, in traction control three, it just isn't gonna go anywhere. So we're gonna take that off and see, maybe a good experiment to see from a dead stop in the middle of a steep climb with loose rock and dirt. How do we fare? Ready? Come on, baby. Also, wish I had a different rear tire. Come on. All right. So it is possible, but I think that'll be a great way to complete my thought. I don't like traction control. I would prefer to have it off. Uh, I just want to have the bike do what it's going to do and try to adjust myself for that rather than have the bike do it for me. And I feel like I ride better that way. So for me, it's traction control off. Okay, just for the heck of it, let's do another hill climb after doing traction control on. Another hill climb with it off. See how we fare in that loose stuff. See, for me, that's just the way to go. I like to control the bike with my throttle hand, so that's my traction control. Giving some more throttle, we're giving less. And uh, that's the type of thing I think that makes you a better rider anyway, so. Nice to have rider aids, but I also think it's good to practice. Throttle sensitivity. This is setting F in your menu. This feature adjusts how quickly the motorcycle responds to changes in the throttle position. Regardless of the setting selected, full power is always available. There are three levels labeled between one and three. The factory default is F1 and represents the least sensitive throttle response. F3 represents the most sensitive throttle response. All right, so throttle sensitivity, we'll get into the menu here scroll on over to f and i'm currently running it in f2 which is the middle setting you've got f3 which is the strongest or uh, highest sensitivity f1 is the most muted i've been running it in f2 but let's run through all three we'll start with f1 and see how it goes Flip it around here now that we've got that F1 feeling. Go back to F. We'll switch it to F2 now, which is where I like to run it. See how that compares. As you would expect, definitely more sensitive. The bike feels a bit more snappy, but not out of control. Yeah, I like the setting. It's snappier, clearly, than F1, but nothing that's going to kind of be too abrupt or out of control. All right, now switching it back, 
Go back in the menu. And we are gonna switch it to F3 now and see how the strongest setting feels. So I think this is a good setting, honestly. If you're looking for that really quick, abrupt hit. For me, it feels a little too touchy right at the crack of the throttle. I like a little bit slower ramp up, but that's personal preference. For those of you that are looking for an immediate hit, F3 is probably where you're gonna wanna be. To me, it's just a little too much. I feel like the bike's a little too jerky, but yeah, for me, it's right in the middle. F2, that's my setting. So I'm gonna switch it back. Brake override or brake sensor. This is setting P in your menu. This feature determines if the motor is enabled when either the front or rear brake are engaged. There are two modes labeled zero and one. P0 allows the motor to be engaged and respond to the throttle while the brakes are engaged. P1 causes the motor to be disengaged when either brake is applied. Tilt protection. This is setting C in your menu. This feature determines if the motor is disengaged regardless of the throttle position when the bike senses an extreme tilt angle, such as falling on its side with the rider on the bike still holding the throttle on. There are two modes labeled zero and one. C0 allows the motor to be engaged and respond to the throttle while the bike is at an extreme tilt angle. C1 causes the motor to be disengaged when the bike senses an extreme tilt angle, which can be left to right or forwards and backwards. Diagnostics. This is setting T in your menu. This feature is used for Suron technicians to diagnose potential faults within the power systems of the motorcycle when the diagnostic equipment is hooked up to the bike. There are two modes labeled zero and one. The factory default is T0, which causes the diagnostic system to not record system information. T1 enables diagnostic logging. Charging power. This is setting you in your menu, and I actually don't have this setting because this is an early model of the Ultra B. This feature controls the power level that your Ultra B battery charges. Typically, this setting is changed if you're charging your Ultra B at home on a low amperage wall plug, or if you're charging from a generator in the field and the circuit breaker trips. Selecting a lower power setting will improve your chances of an uninterrupted change. The charging value selected in the system feature setting mode is stored in the battery, so charging with the battery removed from the bike will keep your selected charge power. There are three modes. U1 is 480 watts, U2 is 750 watts, and U3 is 1100 watts. Selecting a power mode will increase charging time proportionally. For example, 480 watts takes 2.5 times longer to reach a full charge than using 1100 watts. Exit feature setting mode. This is setting X in your menu. This will exit the feature setting mode and save all of your changes. Otherwise, you can let the motorcycle sit for 10 seconds without pressing any buttons and the motorcycle will return to its normal ready to ride state, saving all of your changes. Reverse mode. To enter reverse mode, stop the motorcycle, press and hold the reverse switch on the left handlebar, then rotate the throttle to adjust the speed. Unit display. From the factory, the bike is delivered with kilometers selected. If you'd like to switch to miles, here's what you do. With the motorcycle stopped, the key off, and the kickstand fully extended, press and hold the M button while turning the key to the on position. Then release the M button. Once you've made your selection, leave the motorcycle powered on and do not move or press any buttons for 10 seconds. This will allow the selected mode to be saved to the display and return to the normal riding mode. Setting the odometer. With the motorcycle at a complete stop, momentarily pressing the M button will toggle between total and trip distance. When the display is set to trip mode, it'll indicate the distance traveled and the maximum speed since the last reset of the trip odometer. 
Once the motorcycle begins to move, the display will switch to the current speed. To reset the trip odometer and maximum speed, bring the motorcycle to a complete stop, leaving the key in the on position. Press and hold the S button for more than two seconds. Transmission ratio. This setting is used to calibrate the speed shown on your display to the speed that you're actually traveling. Typically, you'd modify this setting if you change the tire or rim sizes. Changing the sprocket tooth count does not impact this setting. Also, one thing to note is that this setting does not change the actual gear ratio of the motorcycle. To change the ratio, make sure the key is in the off position, the motorcycle is fully stopped, and the kickstand is fully extended. Press the S select button for a minimum of two seconds after turning on the key. Release the S button. Make sure you're in the transmission ratio advanced feature setting mode by looking for the flashing segment on the display. Momentarily pressing the S button will decrease the transmission ratio, and the M button will increase the transmission ratio. When the speed indicated on the display is higher than your actual speed, you'll need to reduce the transmission ratio until the indicated and actual speeds match. If the speed indicated on the display is lower than the actual speed, you'll need to increase the transmission ratio until the indicated and actual speeds match. The best way to do this is to cross-reference your speed on the display with a GPS speed application on your phone to find the accurate setting. Small changes in the transmission ratio will have a large impact on the displayed speed, so you should make changes in 0.1 increments and recheck the displayed speed versus the actual speed. The Suron factory default is 1.0. Time display. Make sure the key is off, the motorcycle is fully stopped, and the kickstand is fully extended. Press the M select button for a minimum of two seconds after turning on the key. Release the M button. Momentarily depressing the M button will toggle between the hours and minutes. If you want to adjust the hour, ensure the hour segments are flashing. This indicates that it's ready to be adjusted. Momentarily pressing the S button will increase the hour. Momentarily pressing the M button will cause the setting to be stored. Then you can follow the same exact procedure for the minutes, and momentarily pressing the M button will allow that setting to be stored as well. All right, so just to recap, I'm going to just run through the way that I've got my bike set up. So if you dive into the menu here, I'm running B, 0, E, 4. Oh, this is A1, but I don't run traction control. I just shut that off. P, 0, C, 0, F, 2, T, 0. So those are my settings. You know, everybody's different. I would suggest you guys go out and do some testing on your own to figure out what you like the best, but those are the settings that I run and a little breakdown of how to set up your Ultra B menu. All right, hopefully this helps you get the right settings on your Ultra B. As always, leave any questions in the comments, and thanks for watching.